start any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah. Sorry. Good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to uh, talk about using Microsoft Word this morning. Um, and I just want to touch on uh, four areas if we have the time during this session. And I'm going to start it, I'm going to approach it from your perspective, um, things that I've observed over the years that students do in the way that they prepare documents for um, submitting coursework and things like that, and make some suggestions about how you can use Microsoft Word to actually save you a lot of time while at the same time improving the look of your, of your work, okay? So we're going to talk about current practices, and I'm going to presume that some of you, but not all of you, will be doing some of these uh, things. And then we're going to talk about content hierarchy and why we use it. And if we get the time, I'm going to bring these together and explain to you the difference between themes, templates, and styles, and style sets. And at the very end, proofing, which um, is a really great tool that Word has, but I don't think people are using it enough, at least. Um, I find documents are covered with my uh, red lines for spelling corrections and things. So we're going to look at that one as well. So let's uh, firstly look at current practices. Yeah, so um, a lot of students have been taught how to use Microsoft Word uh, when they've been in school. And they've, they've been taught how to do it very much in the way that um, you would use a typewriter. So you use a typewriter, you type, it automatically goes down to the next line, or you have to hit the carriage return in order to make a gap between the, uh, the paragraphs. Um, so let's have a look at this anyway. So if you'd like to open uh, the current practices 01 document um, and play along with me, I'm going to show you how this looks. So we're going to look at how people are using Word and how they are formatting and how we can improve that. Okay, so current practices 01. Okay, so hopefully now I'm sharing my Word document. You should see my cursor going around the screen. Is that right, Oriam? Yes, yes, Peter, we can see that. But Peter, Excellent. can you zoom in a little bit? <laughs> it's a bit small. Can I what, sorry? Zoom in a little bit. Is it a bit small? Yeah. Okay, I will. Yep, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's a good uh, short a shortcut trick I, I can show you immediately. With my mouse, if I put my finger on the control button on the keyboard, I can just scroll in and out using the wheel on the mouse. Okay. So if we look, um, basically, you know, we've made an, a bit of text here. Um, it's all just not using any particular style. And what I've done is I've maybe made it bigger or smaller um, to emphasize things. If I switch on the characters, then you can see that I've made the character, the gaps between the paragraphs just by hitting the return key twice. And at the end, you can see that I've um, added a couple of carriage returns at the end. And I've seen essays where, you know, if people want to make a new page, they simply keep hitting the enter key until it pops down like that. So that's how people have been using this. But the trouble is, it looks good for a very small document, but it doesn't work very well when you get to larger and larger documents. And I'll show you how we can improve this. So that text hierarchy that we're doing is in order to uh, make our document easier to read and more attractive. We're trying to draw the eye towards the most important elements, that is the titles, perhaps the quotes, 
So we're creating a kind of hierarchy of information in any document we're writing, even if it's just uh, grouping an essay sentences together into paragraphs. We're trying to make patterns that visually we can read very easily. So we're going to look at how the word program is actually set up as a designer's tool to use that hierarchy and some of the tools we use that for. So I'd like you to open up the uh, blank document text hierarchy, and that will be for me. Um, okay, so first things first, um, if I click here, you can see that at the top, I've got uh, my styles here. And this is the title, that's a normal paragraph, that's a heading one, heading two, heading three, okay? And then I put in some random text. By the way, if I just wanted to play around and I created this text just by hitting, um, I'll show you how I did it. I did the equals rand and then the open close brackets followed by enter. And I'll demonstrate that. So I type equals, Rand, open bracket, close bracket, and then I hit the return key, poof, and it creates all of that extra. So I've just done uh, undo. So firstly, the heading one, if I click in here, I could actually change that to being a heading two, heading three, Heading four, heading five, I'll leave it at heading one. And if I wanted to make a new heading, hit the return key. The way that I do that is to do control plus one on the keyboard shortcut. So if I just type a bit of text here and then I hold the control button down on my keyboard and click on one. You can change it, you can see it changes to heading one hierarchy, two, three, two, one. Yeah. The paragraph text is the default text in this template. We always are working with the design. Even if you start with a blank template, you are always using the somebody's idea of what the design should look like. And in the case of Microsoft Word, it's the normal dot, doc x, dot, um, the, the template document, okay? So the template document comes with a number of settings and different hierarchy of these settings. The gaps, for example, if we look, I'm not using the carriage return anymore in order to make gaps. I'm achieving that by how I define that normal paragraph. And if I click here, in I've right clicked, I click on the normal, I right click to open up the contextual dialog box. I'm gonna click modify, and I'm just gonna change some parameters here. So I'm gonna make it 11 and I'm also going to remove that gap there. So I'm going to format paragraph. So you can see that there's a gap before of 12 points. Let's make it six points. And if I click OK, you can see how the, doc, the whole document is reformatted. And then we're demonstrating this on a, a small one-page document, but they could be happening just as easily on um, a, a whole book, okay? So that's how we change particular styles. Similarly, I could change that, right-click, and then I would be changing all heading ones in the document. 
So I can make that slightly bigger, for example. Similarly with heading two, I'm right clicking this time and I can choose a different one. Uh, I'm better off doing up here to modify it and I can make this slightly bigger. Yeah, so changing the formatting is a lot quicker. That's uh, heading one. Okay. So. so next we're going to look at um, how to create a table of contents. using these styles. So I want you to open up that table of contents template, which is called TOC template. And you'll see that actually the text that's within the document is actually the instructions on how to create a table of contents. So we're gonna go through this together now, these steps. Okay, so. Okay, so helpfully, you can see that uh, there's a number of headings here. Yeah, that's heading one. Normal, a quote. There's um, some bullet points. I can put this out to the side by clicking here. Sometimes it's easier to have more styles visible. Okay, so this is the style set that belongs to this document. And we're going to create a table of contents about here. So I'm just going to put the cursor in this position, and then I go up to references. If my button will work. Ah, oh, yeah, good, okay. And here, I've got table of contents, and if I click on that, you can see I've got a number of choices, different designs. I'm just gonna choose the first one. And you can see that I've now created a table of contents. And you can ask, how did that happen? So it was created from the headings that you used in the styling of the document. So for example, update when things change. I click on that, that is a heading one and change formatting of the table of contents entries. There's a heading two, change the number of, ah, uh, there it is, change the text formatting. And if we look up here, their second level headings. And this table of contents can be updated for whatever changes that you make. Okay, so let's, um, let's move on to the next stage. We'll just close that up. And move on to the next slide. And now I'm going to show you how this can be used to update the styles, updating with styles, okay? So let's look at table of contents 02, which should be also in your folder. 
I'll just that. table of contents two. Okay, I'm presuming you're still seeing this. Here's my table of contents. I've got the characters turned on here, showing the gaps. I'll just zoom out a bit. Okay, so use styles for headings. This particular heading is not in the table of contents. And the reason why it isn't in the table of contents is because it was just created manually. So if you create all of the formatting individually on your document, you won't be able to use the power of Word to create a table of contents. You have to use the styles hierarchy because remember, the table of contents is going to be created from these heading one, two, three, and other custom designs that you might choose to add to your document. So this was uh, heading one. So let's make this fit. And I'm going to do that just by simply clicking in the line. And you can see at the moment it's showing as normal. I'm going to make that a heading one. And now I can click anywhere within the table of contents. Excuse me. And I can choose update the table. And now I'm going to update the entire table. And watch what happens to this use styles for headings. It's now appeared within the table of contents. Similarly, if I changed yeah, I've changed the the title wording. I can also click in here, choose update the entire table. And you can see now the heading has changed. I'll just use styles for headings. I'm just going to return that back to how it was. And then update the table again. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to show you, down here, uh, I'm going to add level two entry by turning that into a second level heading. And I'm going to take that one from the table of contents entirely by making a normal. I'll go back to the table of contents, update the table. And you can see again, the table has updated. Sorry, is that a bit easier to read? Okay, so here I've got the characters on. If I have it how a lot of you work so that that character button isn't visible, then you can see that there's a break and then we go on to the other page. And you will have achieved that perhaps by doing this kind of thing. Let me just remove this by selecting it 
and deleting. And now I'm going to demonstrate how I would move that onto the next page. And the shortcut for this is very, very easy. You just hold the control key down and hit the enter key. Okay. Just undo that. So that's control plus enter. Yeah? That's how you do it. Control plus enter on the keyboards. And then to remove it, you can remove it. Yeah? Okay. Let's... So how does this work on a very large document? And I'm going to show you how that multiplies in problems. When you, when you start using your old style of formatting by using that, that return key to make spaces, you're having to make the, the um, table of contents up manually. So let's, let's have a look at my own collaborative partnership book. Just open that up. Um, okay, if I just firstly, this is how you would see it. There's the title page, there's the table of contents. Um, if I do it in read mode, down at the bottom, you can see there's the table of contents. Everything is being done manually. And if we look at the headings, that's got a heading one. But that's not got a heading. That's just normal. Uh, tables aren't very good. Again, I click on it and there's nothing appearing here. If I open up the style sheet, you can see that there's an enormous number of um, styles that have been created on this document. And essentially, the person who's created the document has manually formatted the entire thing. So this has created an enormous number of styles, but with no hierarchy of headings, which is why the table of contents had to be created manually. If I put the uh, return key on, you can see that the gaps have been created by simply hitting the return key. And there's lots of um, minor errors in formatting where the commas have gone strange. And if anything needs to be changed on this, for example, that was to go onto a new page for some reason, it would mean that whoever was creating the table of contents would have to change the page numbering on absolutely everything that happened after that. They would need to amend this section also. Okay, just going to close up a few windows. So that's how this very large document of 54 pages has been created just manually. In the second stage,
we can see how I'm gradually trying to amend this. So if I open up stage two headings hierarchy, I haven't given you this because it's a very large file, but I'm going to demonstrate to you how it looks. And out to the side. So you can see now that I've created a table of contents. I've gone through this document. I've given things headings. And I'm gradually amending it so that um, the headings hierarchy is being created. So there's headings two, three, no. And I've used this in order to generate the table of contents. If I zoom out a bit, we can see that actually the table of contents is absolutely gigantic because although I have created this hierarchy, it's showing too much. I used the uh, paragraph text, the numbering text as heading three, and the table of contents is now showing all of that content as well. So I need And then that is the table of content is contents is a really excellent way of revising your hierarchy of content because it should be reflective of how somebody would want to look at your document, how they want to prioritize the information. Excuse me, I'll just let the dog out. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So let's now go back. To the following one. So let's look at stage three. And we can see that in this image, the hierarchy has been refined and starts to look like a proper document. It's drastically reduced. And I'm going to show you how I did this. So I've revised this existing document in order to create a nice looking document that is now editable. So in this document, you can see that the correct hierarchy is being applied. There's level one headings, level two headings, the level three headings, the numbered paragraphs. I've taken them out from the document, a table of contents. Let's look at how that appears. So it's still a heading three, but what I've done is I've amended the table of contents so that it doesn't show that. And if we look, I'm just going to see if I can uh, show you in the No, that's not up at the top. Oops. We can see that I've also added that uh, the appendix um, 
the appendices as well. And the beauty of this is that you can see that the document is 48 pages. Dog back in again. And if I scroll down, let's see if I can change something. So at the moment, we've got Centre for Academic Quality Assurance is on page eight. But what about if I just add an extra page break in? So that it's now on page nine. If we look at the table of contents, if I had made this manually, I would now need to revise every single page number from that heading onwards. Yeah, they would all change on the entire 48 page document. Um, but they don't because all I have to do is update the table. And we can see now it's gone on to page nine, Centre for Academic Quality. Yeah. Also, I've added appendices. And if I wish, I can now modify them. So that, for example, they might have uh, a colour. I'll just make that a more obvious colour change. The appendix is like that, and the child of that. So Appendix A is now also purple. And if we scroll down, we can see that they've all changed. See? And you might ask, will it change in the table of contents? Well, let's have a look. I'll click in here, update the whole table. And no, it hasn't changed. And it's because they have their own styles. If I click in here, you'll see that it's a it's a hyperlink, it has its own style. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So I've created styles for the appendices and added them to the table of contents. Now I'm going to save the style set and save the template. Okay. So now here is the style set. And if I look up here under design, we can see there's a number of style sets. So this is a bunch of different style sets that you could use. And, and the reason why the document is changing fluidly, I'll try and get some pages with more headings in. The reason why it changes is because of the design styles that I've used, that headings one, headings two, 
headings three, and that allows me to change globally. But the current style sheet that I've created, I've imitated the look of the document that the original author wanted, and I want to stay that. So actually, all I have to do is right click and choose save and give it a name. So you can call it um, CP and book. Yeah, and I could apply different themes to it as well. So now when I put my thing over here, you can see that was one style I saved, and there's my CP handbook. So I can change the overall look of it, and I'm going to zoom out again so that you get a better idea. So I can change the whole thing so that it has a different look. Notice the heading types change and it affects the page numbering and everything. And I can click on that and it changes the style, also changes the, the page numbering or I can go back to that style set that I saved. So that style set that we're talking about is what we've got up here. I've saved this. And if you look, there's all the headings, everything. Yeah, together with the appendices that I made. So ideally, when I have finished cleaning this up, I would then go and remove all the unwanted styles in order to make that a more efficient document and easier to use. I can also protect the styling of this so that nobody can accidentally mess around with it, okay? So that's the style set. We're on the handbook one. Okay. And we can save the entire document as a template. And when we're saving the entire document as a template, we're changing, we're saving not just uh, the formatting, the style set, but we're also changing, uh, saving all of the content as well. And I'd go save as save. And change that to a document. Now there's a few different templates you can have. So this is word template, which is d dot dot x or a macro enabled template, which is dot m. Now uh, a dot m, a macro enabled template has more interactivity in it. So, uh, but you may have problems with security settings on your email if you try to attach a dot m dot m type document as an email attachment so i'm just going to save this as dot x and click save and now i'm going to close it and now if i go back to my word document document here and I want to start 
a new document. Um, mm -mm. I've got the blank document up here, but I should also have new. No, don't have that. So that's acting up a bit. Let's just close this document. So you could ask, what are the differences between a template, a theme, and a style? Well, a template are files that help you design lots of interesting things. And there are thousands that Microsoft make available to you. So the, temp the, the templates contain everything you need to create, say, an invitation, a report, a postcard, a birthday invitation, things like that. Themes give your document a designer quality. So they are just really color themes and theme fonts, colors and fonts. And you can save themes across a range of documents. So if you're creating uh, branding for the particular company that you're working for, for, often they will have their own color palette and you will save that as a theme, and then you can use that across PowerPoint, Excel, Word, the whole lot, yeah? So that's, themes are transferable, but they are just really fonts and colors. Styles are the things that we do to the content in order to format and organize visually the content of the document. So the heading one, heading two, the normal uh, paragraph font, uh, things like that, they're styles. And you can apply all sorts of added effects as well. So essentially, templates can contain all of the content of a document. So within the, uh, the collaborative partnership uh, template that I showed you, there's all of the content, there's the tables, the pictures, the logos, and other objects are all there. And I can use that as I like. So it gives me the appearance of how the finished document will look, and it gives me the style set. So this, it includes the style sets. It includes any macros, any controls, text boxes, and it includes building blocks. And building blocks enable you to do things like save sections of content for reuse. So, for example, when I was writing my dissertation, I found that I needed to say, uh, type short circular country walks and I was writing this all the time short circular country walks and I got sick of typing this so I saved this as a text block and I saved it with short s circular c country walks so I saved it with the letters SCCW, and when I typed SCCW and hit enter, the building block of short circular country walks was automatically put in. So the templates, let's see, are the examples the global template is the normal template. So if you start a new document and you start it as blank, then you are using the normal global template with the normal building blocks within it. If 
you choose to start a document with a document template, then you're starting with content that is suitable for a particular style of presentation, whether it be a report, a letterhead, a newsletter, or a form. And Microsoft Word comes with many examples. The hardest step is the first, which is to start by choosing a template first. For example, a student report. I can choose to open that and then create my report using these example pages simply by taking out the content and inserting my own. Um, so I would use these four pages and I would use that and put in my content, swap these around. So I've given you Jazzy student report. If I share my screen, back to that word document, okay. It's here, I'm choosing new and there are lots and lots of examples here, reports, and they will download. But there's much, many more than this, and they're under headings, reports, articles, essays, business cards, student report with photograph, or another way to search is by just typing something in. So, um, Table of contents, see if that come up with something. So here we've got dog travel checklist, organized and modern resume. Uh, I could type in uh, wedding anniversary didn't come up. So here's some anniversary templates that I can use. Uh, and if I choose it, I can just download it. And there it is. Happy anniversary, personal message. Yeah. Okay, so the next and uh, stage is proofing and I'm flying through. I think I've got about five minutes quickly. So we're going to look quickly at spell checking and grammar checking. Open up TOC proofing 01. Let's have a look. Uh, Zero one, where is it? Mm -hmm. Perhaps I didn't give you that. Let's see. Okay. Now, in this particular example, I've got the character turned on. Let's switch it off for the moment. Let's zoom in and have a look at what we have. And I put some spelling mistakes in. So if we go to references, I think it's that one, or review. And we click on editor. So from review, click on editor. And here I get a report. 
I've completed my document and the report says that I may have four spelling mistakes and four errors with grammar and two sections where there might be suggestions to be made. So let's look at spelling first. And I click on spelling. And this particular example is suggesting that actually I might need to spell it that way. So I'm going to select that one and it gives me the meaning as well. The next step is suggesting weighty, thick, demanding. So yeah, I like that. This one, control plus enter, I actually like the way I've written that. Similarly, I'm happy with that too, so I'm ignoring that. So all the spelling is now being corrected. Let's look at the grammar. <coughs> Excuse me. So here I've written, hit enter after the first paragraph in this very document and get a new line. Now, there is a word new, which is correct, but the choice is incorrect. So although it doesn't show up as a spelling mistake, there's a suggestion that perhaps I meant that one. And I did, so I've changed that. Here, we have a good example, which is common in languages where you don't differentiate so much between singular and plural. You get lots of error in English where people type plural where they mean singular or singular when they mean plural. And in the Microsoft editor, it's highlighting that and suggesting that perhaps I meant the singular. Heavy lifting doesn't stop with creating a table of contents. So that's an error because it should be singular. So I'm going to click and accept that. Go to your table of contents and click anywhere in it, then click updates table and click OK. OK, so I put, there's a comma in there, but actually the way it's spoken, there shouldn't be a comma there. Yeah, because there's no pause when I'm reading it. So I'm going to accept that one as well. Now Word knows that paragraph is a heading and includes it in the table of contents. And again, I've put a comma in here, when in fact I don't need one, so I'm going to accept that change as well. So here, again, there's a it's querying whether I mean the singular form or the plural form. So I read it out to myself in order to work out which sounds better. Update page numbers only is selected by default. So what I mean is that phrase, that's a singular phrase, in fact. So correct is the singular form. So I'm going to ignore that. And now all of the grammar has been checked. Let's see under. I've typed things out as I might say them. And that means that um, I'm writing less formally. So I could choose to accept that. Um, instead of it's, I write it is not really magic. You do not need to wait until your pages are finalised. And you can see the suggestions about formality if I was doing this manually, they're highlighted with a blue broken line underneath. So I'm going to accept that. And conciseness, I'm going to click on that part. And there's one suggestion here where I've written, OK, it is not really magic. And I think, yeah, I don't really need to use really there. So I'll change that. And now I've completed my review and I've finished reviewing all the editor's suggestions. So that's really what you should be doing to all of your documents before you submit them. And 
your tutors could choose also as a quick thing to switch this on and select editor to see if you've done a review and proofing of your document before you've submitted it. So that's, um, I think I've timed it pretty well. Where am I? Okay, am I back in the room? Yes, Peter, we can see you. Excellent, excellent. Well, I timed that really well, didn't I? Yeah. 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, sure. On the button. Five. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you managed to cover everything? <laughs> yeah, I did. I probably went a bit fast, but um, if you've got the documents, then you can play around with them. What I want to give you the impression of is that whilst manually formatting a very, very small amount of writing can be done just by clicking bold and making letters bigger. The bigger the document, the harder it is to actually keep consistency in how you're working. Plus also, if you have a really good style set that you're using, actually it becomes a lot faster to create attractive documents on the fly. Mm, yeah, agree. I think it's uh, quite useful for the students, especially when they are doing their research. They are, they are, they are writing their theses and uh, dissertation. Absolutely, yes. And it's something that um, I noticed over the years that students don't, I get a feeling that perhaps we, we've got a bit of a gap. We show students how to use Word, but not really to the extent of what it's able to do to help us. So I thought that was a handy thing. I could also do speak similarly about referencing because referencing in Word is also a lot easier and automated than just manually creating references. Mm, I see. Uh, I just want to have a quick round, like uh, asking the students, is there anything that you guys want to ask uh, Mr. Peter? before he ends the session. Is there anything that you guys are not sure about or he's going too fast? You need some clarification? Yes, no? Hello? <laughs> They're being quite- Everybody's shy. probably shell shell. Oh, hi Ram. Okay, all clear. No questions. I hope this session will be useful for you guys. Ah, uh, you. Okay, yeah, I see a lot of reply. Okay. Can I, can I just ask um, mm -hmm. if you, if the students could quickly respond um, if there were new things they learnt today? Yeah. Any new things? I myself, I learned about the shortcuts like the headings and how to how to standardize. Before that, I just copy and paste everything. Do you have I think anything it's, new? Uh, yeah, it, the, um, it's because of my background in design that I automatically look for quick solutions. So for example, that control plus one to make a heading or control plus two or control plus three, that yeah. works as a shortcut in lots of different programs. So as a web designer, for example, it's exactly the same formatting and shortcut in web design as it is for using Word. Uh, there is a student says that uh, the zoom in shortcut was nice. The TOC, they learn about the TOC. Yeah, I think they, they, they learn quite a lot from this session. Good, good. I'm glad. The uh, By the way, the table of contents instruction document that I've shared with you, I actually found that as a template within Word. Mm. Okay. So I couldn't demonstrate, but I was... I thought, oh, I wonder what keywords I can use to search for 
useful documents for students. So I tried essay and I think I got one for a short essay outline and then I did something else and I found this brilliant document that actually is formatted in order to teach you how to make a table of contents. So I thought if I share that with you, then you always have something to go back to to remind yourself how to create the table. Yeah. Okay. Hey, if you've recorded this, have you recorded the session? Yes, I have recorded this, and uh, I will yeah. share with the students uh, through our social media, and perhaps I can share with you the link share as with well. Me too? Sorry? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I will share with you as well. No problem. Yeah, that'd be great because my wife wants yeah. to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, can no problem. <laughs> I will share it with you as well. Um, is there anything else from the students, or is there anything else, uh, Peter, you you like to top up? No, I, I think that uh, covers it for today. Okay, um, if that, then I will conclude today's session. Thank you very much for the students to join, and most uh, importantly, thank you, Peter, for sharing such an informative session. I think the students have a fruitful session. So, um, because it's already five something here in Malaysia, so I doesn't want to drag the students too late. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice day, okay? Okay. Thanks a lot and for coming, Peter, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy.